Hello, and welcome to Building Codes for Building Decks, down the load path. Now we've gotten the loads to the ends of the beam, so now let's bear it down onto the posts. This session is going to be all about 507.5.2 and the figures that it references. So first, it starts out by telling us that the attachment must be capable of transferring vertical loads. But we've really already talked about this and the one and a half inch bearing length minimum. Now, remember also that's for each ply in the beam. They've got to be over posts. However, it is common to see decks built like this. And quite simply, the issue here is that the code only provides for direct bearing. But let's consider when we talked about joist hangers. The direct bearing that the code provides for ends right here. And then we've got to transfer those loads over to the ledger. And to do that with a hanger, we needed all this testing and evidence and organizations and installation instructions about how to prove that that hanger can transfer the loads. Well, who's going to do all of that for a wood to wood bolted connection? Well, I know they would use the NDS, wood engineering standards to do it, right? And that's your clue. These connections could certainly work, but you'd need an engineer to prove it. Although, how was that hanger proven? Right? What about a beam hanger? Certainly, someone has come up with another option. And that's what the code is always allowing for. So here we see that we've got a saddle and we've got bearing that makes that code happy. And then the free market can take it from there. Remember, the code doesn't generally aim to prohibit things. It just demands proof if the proof isn't already in the code. So we've got to go see what the proof proves. For this nailed installation that we just looked at, it can support uh, 1,160 pounds. Now, if we divide that by the common dead and live load, this is just an example, we could support 23 square feet. Now, this deck is an example that's going to be used in the next session when we talk about posts and foundations, and it shows the tributary loading areas of deck on each post. So these are the areas that are within 23 square feet. So we can see that that side bolted connection could be done using that particular hardware, but you've got to find out what the limits are. All right, so let's look at this further. Let's do another idea. Let's go back to that 16 foot span from engineered lumber that we talked about in the previous session. Now this is going to generate a much larger load transfer over to the post. And with larger beams and longer joists, we could get a load transfer that exceeds the area the code can gather just from two by 12s. So let's go back and look at this treated LVL example. This is the one we used previously. And now let's go ahead and read the footnotes that we didn't read before. Let's just read one of them actually. Notice here it says the minimum bearing length is one and three quarter inches. That's more than the code minimum of one and a half inches. Hmm. Think about this. Think about an LVL and its bearing is in this orientation. So the grain trans the load transfer here is parallel to grain. And then nonetheless, we can get much further spans. Now carpenters will understand this well. Wood is much stronger parallel to the grain than it is perpendicularly. This is why a post can receive loads so well without, without crushing down. So let's go look now at the details for a glue lamb beam, another kind of beam that could create larger loads. But these loads are going to transfer perpendicular to the grain of the beam. And so if we look here, they have a whole table for minimum bearing length. And it starts at the code minimum of one and a half inches, but it increases from that point based on how much load is being transferred. So sometimes that bearing area needs to be larger. Okay, now we're going to actually get to the tricky part of this session, this code section. The attachment must also resist horizontal displacement. 